Good afternoon, everyone. I'm, hi, Brenda. Hello. I'm Anthe Frangiatis of The Drawing Room in downtown New Bedford. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon for our virtual studio tour and conversation with Brenda Morrison of Jasmine Keene. Hi, Brenda. Hey. <laughs> so Brent, uh, Brenda and I have been working together um, Oh. oh, I think we have a glitch. Maybe. Hmm. A little bit of technical difficulties. You're back. I am? Okay. Thank you for telling me I was back. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry about that. Thanks for um, managing through our technical difficulties. Um, Liz is with us in the background. She will help us out with images. As I was saying, uh, Brenda and I have been working together for quite a few years now. Um, she is a glass bead artist based in Wareham, Massachusetts. And um, she and I share an interesting story. Um, I found this pair of Jasmine Keen earrings while I was traveling out in Washington State several years ago. And when I came back, I happened to look them up and was uh, quite surprised to find out that they were made in my own town. <laughs> um, so Brenda and I um, have been working together. She has a great collection of glass bead jewelry as well as housewares and a few other things because of COVID um, that we represent here in the drawing room. And we're talking with her today in her own studio so she can give us a little bit of background about what she does, how she's been doing it, um, and tell us about what's new. Well, um, I'm a lamp worker, which means I work on a torch on a flame. And this is my torch. And um, it's an ancient process where people um, used to make um, glass right onto copper pipes or copper tubing and then throw it in a vat of acid and the acid would eat away the copper um, as they worked on these little lamps um, and that's where the word came from. Now we have a, um, and with that process there were horrible fumes that people died of horrible cancers. So now we use uh, rods that have been dipped in liquid clay so that I can make them right onto that and then stick it into my kiln that has a window cut out of it and then once it's cooled, the clay allows the beads to come off so that we don't have to use poisons or anything to get them off. And I do different kinds of beads with different kinds of rods. So if I wanna do a little bead, I'm gonna do a little rod. If I wanna make a big one with a big hole, I have thicker rods and I have like giant rods. And um, I use gravity and hand tools and all kinds of gadgets and gizmos that have just one one use. I use molds like graphite molds that um, marble makers use, and I can get unusual shapes from that. Um, I just got a new tool last week. This is called a dot pusher. So where I do a lot of dotting, this is an angled graphite thing, so that I can just push these little dots in, and they go in perfectly every time. Um, and that's what this tool does. And that's about it. And I do it over and over and over again all day long. So <laughs> um, we had talked about this a little bit earlier during the week. Um, with your lamp working, you um, produce all of your own beads. And for people who are not familiar um, with Brenda's work, this is a very good representation of the beads that she uses in her jewelry. Um, so on a typical on a typical day or a typical production week, are you making ten? Are you making a hundred? Are you making a thousand? Um, oh, I never hit a thousand. I don't think. Um, I can fill a kiln, and that would be a couple of hundred beads. But I'll do random. I do various sizes because they all do different things for me in my jewelry. So, like on housewares, I need a thicker hole. So this allows me to. Um, get a nice consistent hole so I can slip them right on my bases, on my blanks that I have made for me. Um, little tiny rods are probably better for jewelry because I want the beads to be smaller. I like to stack things up and 
and not have big goony things in your ears. Um, and it allows me to make lightweight things too. So if I'm making a lot of little beads, I can make, you know, 10 of them in two minutes. But if I'm making an elaborate bead, I might lose 15 to 20 minutes. So it all depends on, but what I generally do is stay in two color, um, I generally make two color beads. Um, very rarely do I deviate from that, but I'll have like a production list. And then um, I'll say my favorite is orange and yellow. So I might stay in orange and yellow for two hours, but I'm gonna make six of this, six of that, six of that. And I just have a list and I just go bang, bang, bang down it. And I put on a podcast and next thing I know, I look up and it's two hours later and you know, I've made 60 beads and it's time to change color. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I enjoy about your work is the fact that you do have um, a wide variety of color in your um, collection. And the other thing that I enjoy about your collection is the fact that they're coordinated but mismatched. Um, so is that is that something that... That's my thing. Over the you know, I've been doing this for about 28 years now. And... I used to call, there's been different phrases like coming and going or ascending, descending, uh, mismatch, asymmetrical. And my thing is I like, I, I can make something 10 times and they're gonna be basically the same shape. Um, and with that allows me, I can do di different surface decorations. So I kind of like that surprise when somebody has two different earrings on, when somebody will say, oh, do you know you have, oh, you mean to do that? <laughs> That's, That's exactly what happened with my sister when I gave her a pair. Someone came up to her, actually a little girl, yeah. um, who she, she, my sister teaches elementary school and one of her students um, approached her and made sure that she told her that, she asked her if she knew that she had mismatched earrings. So. Oh, it's the best. Is that yeah. I have all these, um, over the years, I've had like kids that I met when they were in strollers and now they're in college. So it just really ages me. But there were these like militant groups of seven year old boys who are very rigid and they would come up <laughs> and they had their prepared statements for me. I like things uh, regiment or not regiment. That's what I say. <laughs> but um, they'll say, I don't like asymmetrical. I like things balanced and you do, you know, and then you know, the mother's wear. So these like little, little anal beganals, um, and it's driving them crazy that the mother's wearing mismatched earrings. <laughs> but um, teachers always t are often tell me that, especially like substitute teachers, kids like them quicker if they have cool earrings on. Well, it's, a, it's something that uh, draws their attention, and I do think the shapes are unique and playful. So I know in addition to your color theories, you have a black, white, and brown, your earthen series, um, as well as the clear beads. Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference or do you have a preference in terms of when you're, work, when you're working or did the, does the glass react differently, I guess, based on the color? I use different types of glass. These are all um, soda lime um, glass and my bright colors come from Bullseye, which is made in um, Seattle. And then like my, the first class that I learned on um, was the Italian stuff, the Moretti, the Afrit. And with that, it's softer and creamier. I can produce quicker on that. The bullseye glass is um, brittle and kind of shocky sometimes. So if, I, if I'm rushing the glass, I'll get all little pingers, little flying things, um, flying all over the place. But, um, and now I have a, another favorite kind of glass called Creation is Messy. Um, and it's uh, CIM made in China. And those colors just are killing me lately. And so this is the kind of thing, I'll get just get lost in purple as I work. And that's what I'm thinking about is, oh, I wish, I wish this was the color that it would stay as it's glowing. Um, so my thing is I really like the bright colors. And so for me to wear something, it's usually a bright color or I'll throw black and white on. But um, I, have a, I make an awful lot of earth tone things for, um, I think it's a more of a classic look. Um, women who have to wear things to work, like it's so it's like secretly cool. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, I, so when you when you mentioned earlier that you have, what's that? 
I used to call them grown up colors. <laughs> and now we can't call them that anymore because we're grown ups. <laughs> yeah. So when you mentioned earlier about the different types of glass killing you, is that um, is that in reference to the glass reacts differently when it's different color or in the kiln or when you're working with it? Mesmerizing thing, like um, like this is a new cut. They'll have like um, this manufacturer will have glass that comes out and they only make it for a short time and then you won't be able to get it anymore. So I belong to all these groups called de-stashes where people will say, I got a pound of um, Hurricane Andrew. And they have a, <laughs> something I bid on the other day just for the name, Bibby Bobbity Blue, all in one word. And I'm like, all right, I'm buying it. Um, and, and, and like people will like offer, maraschino cherry from 2012 and i'll be like oh that was an excellent batch and then i spent <laughs> an hour chasing it around the internet and bidding and and fighting with strangers um just so i can get my 2012 red and um and that's it's the silly stuff that i fill my time with so all of the glass when you um purchase it comes in the are they called rods or canes canes are more of a finished thing um, these are just rods. And so these are the two, like, this is what I was working on earlier. Um, and so this is creation of messy colors. Um, it's a little more expensive than the other stuff, but I'm just obsessed with it lately. Um, there's like colors called like evil purple that the minute it comes on the, um, on the auction sites, it can go up to like a hundred dollars a pound, a quarter pound just because people remember what it could do, all these magical things. And um, and that's it. And so all my, like my bullseye colors, um, those are pretty consistent. Those, those are the same, those are the same colors that I've been using forever. Um, and they're skinnier and, and longer and, um, and richer. But I mean, these are the nuances that like I notice, um, but regular people don't care. <laughs> So one of the things that you and I have been talking about, um, and we've always talked about, is that um, the majority of your business is done through shows, um, traveling throughout the country. So one of the reasons I probably haven't met you is you used to not be home very often. Mm -hmm. um, and that clearly has changed this year um, with show traffic. And I know you have you have stepped up your game with your website, because that was just that was just uh, launched this last week. Jalesco built my new um, site for me and I spent the month just making everything over again and photographing it so that we'd all have the same backgrounds. And <laughs> it's important. Um, this, you know, I used to just photograph things on like a placemat or on the seat of my car. <laughs> and even when <laughs> and I never photographed anything and I would wait for someone to come up to me at a show and I'd say, Oh, I remember making that. I should make that again. So for since iPhones, I literally take a picture of everything I make. Well, and all of us now, um, not when we're by ourselves in our own studios, but all of us are wearing uh, masks out in public. So I know you had sent one of these along to us in terms of mask holders. Yeah. Those are, um, I, I got a couple of requests for it since the pandemic. And I'm kind of happy with them. You can connect them. You know, of course, I forgot to bring one out. You can connect That's them. Okay. Or you can do it as a single thing. Like I used to make ID holders, especially around the Washington area where everybody had to wear an ID everywhere. And that was really big. And I would make that more of a, um, it would come down to like a funnel effect so it could clip on. But this, this works for that. So I got a few requests. And then I launched my website this week. And it was well received. I think... Um, so you can be walking and be able to pop it up um, and and be courteous without you know having to um, reach into your pocket and and it fell back an hour a mile earlier. So I think it's kind of cool and uh, one more way to be be groovy. Yeah. I agree with you. Ooh. Are you gonna walk us through the making of a pea? I think I will. Or I, need my, okay. I, I need my assistant. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> so I can, um, maybe Mark, what we can do is, oh, go ahead. So, all right. So I need to turn away. 
Oh, that's a great tool chest you've got there. Yes, my eye. Hi, Jen. Um, I was told I have a non-speaking role. Oh. <laughs> We will, we will, um, we will die. All right. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. My cameraman really um, should have had more training. <laughs> we, no, uh, uh, we need the, we need the video. Just no <laughs> audio. It's okay. Okay. Continue as Brenda. Well, what I can do is tell everyone um, oh, the story of, Jasmine Keen. Um, so one of the things that always throws us off is um, Br Brenda's business is called Jasmine Keen. Um, Jim, who we just met, is Jim Keen. Jasmine is, uh, was actually one of their cats. Um, okay, so can business. you see the flame oh. at this point? Yes. Okay. All right. So what I do is I get a, I get a rod and then I just... There's different parts of the flame here. The front, if you can see here, that it's the hottest part. This is probably a couple thousand degrees. And then up here, it's probably about 600 degrees. And so what you do is initially get a good, um, get a good gather going, get a little ball um, and melt it. And then um, if I was making a big bead, I would use a thicker rod maybe or just really spend some time getting a really good blob going but um so that's just a rod of glass correct just a rod of glass so everything starts out as a rod of glass so this one is like six millimeters i can get this color in like a thick rod like a nine millimeter or a 13 millimeter and then as small as a, as a two millimeter so then all you do is drape it so after you get a little blob going you drape it and so at this point i just keep building it up and you can and then um i usually don't talk while i make these <laughs> <laughs> so um now i'm just going to add to it to make sure that it's the same and at this point, if I was going to make like a, a weird bead, like a bead using one of my molds, I would make it to the um, to the width that I need for my for my bead. But on this one, I can even use a little hand hand uh, these called marble molds. So it's a half dome, and so if I was going to make a, a marble, I would just keep rolling it back and forth in here. So this is another way that I keep constant on size, so that I always know that the end product is gonna match something else. So you just tamp it down into there. Um, some bead makers don't use molds. It's kind of controversial. Um, there's purists okay. out there who, um, um, but I love a mold. And so I don't know if you can see all my molds in my rack. I'm always mm -hmm. adding to it. Um, um, I like to be able to make weird triangles with crisp lines. And so you still have to make a pretty much perfect bead, but then you're going to slam it into a brass mold that's going to distort it. Um, well, so I guess the art. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know why it's controversial. I tried to avoid it just because um, that's what I used right. to read about when I first started. But uh, the reality is I like the effects. I like the changing silhouettes for beads. I don't, it, it still takes a skill set to get a good bead using a mold. Um, and you can just use that as a base and then do all your weird stuff on top of that. But this is just the, a basic gravity based bead. So I, I could spin it, I could spend, um, a, you know, an hour on one bead, just spinning it around and adding and doing all the surface decoration. So on this one, and the thing is, you don't go on to the next step until the last one is perfect. So this one, I use these little dental tools and I can, so if my hole doesn't look perfect, I'm not going to go on to the next step because I hate a wonky hole. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. So the piece that you're holding in your left hand is the piece that is, is putting the hole in the bead. And then you're applying glass right. with your right so, hand. Yep. So this one, 
like their gadgets, like people have electric um, uh, mandrel spinners. I can't imagine that that would be toy that, that that would be a horrible experience to make a bead um, with a little electric toothbrush and buzzing in your hand. But I can like if I see that something needs a little more flame, I can just catch it on my and then so that's pretty much perfect. And then I take a skinnier rod called the stringer. And again, you can make a like a, a stringer that's really, really thin so that it practically disappears the minute it touches the flame. Um, and I'd use that like if I'm making backgrounds on things. And so you just plant it, you just plant your dot. And then what I do is I use the horizon. So it's all, it's you know how they used to say you'll use math. Well, this is when you, um, so I can turn the bead slightly. And the minute I can stop seeing that first dot that I planted, that's when you plant the second one. And then you keep just doing that around. And if you do that by just letting your horizon peak, um, you'll have a perfect bead. And so I put my first row down and then um, go to the next one. And then you can get like a million, I can probably put six rows here if I want to real, and I'll call that like a littered bead. And then this is where I can have my other tool. This is my new handy dandy um, dot pusher. So because this is on an angle, normally I would use one of these guys and I would just bounce it and flatten it. But with this handy dandy tool, it's on an angle and it's going to, I can assert the same amount of pressure and get the same um, effect all over it. And then if I wanted, um, I can do, I can just stack dots. And this is actually a style that I do pretty frequently. I call it a hairy bead just because it's just layers and layers and I don't burn them in because I want to see the layers. So I'll just kind of burn them in and I'll just give them a lick in the flame so that I, I light them up. And at this point they're pliable and I can just take the dome off because I know that I want to do other layers and And then I can, and then to make it hairy, I put the final um, layer on and I leave this one to dome. So I'm going to let the flame just lick it and let it puff up. And then that's it. Ooh. Oh, did we, I think we, oh, I think, am I lost? Was I lost? I think we're gone. And then I stick it in the kiln. I think we're gone. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> All right, bye baby. Brenda, you're still here. We've got you. Am I back? Brenda, you're good to go. You're still here. Okay. All right, well, that's it. That's basically a bead. And then I just do that all day long. <laughs> so I think Anthony had to uh, step away because I, I think someone came knocking at the drawing room door. <laughs> so that's why I think you thought you were you were lost. So do you um, do you find the um, the process kind of mesmerizing or meditative? I know I was I was this is this is me. I was sitting here watching like this. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's the most relaxing thing. Like I can look up and literally hours have gone by, and um, I just love it. After 28 years, it's still the, my favorite thing to do. Like a couple of years ago, I was very sick for a while and I wasn't working, and all I did was sketch and make plans for what I was going to do when I was strong enough. And mm -hmm. and I haven't looked back. I I just love it. Well, and, and oh, go ahead. My, my equipment is very heavy. Like um, it's not portable at all. I, my husband brings my tanks in for me and then reconnects them because it kills your hands. So uh, I know that I'm spoiled. I'm kind of princessy that I don't even deal with that. I just yell, oh, I need a tank change. And then it's <laughs> magic. And then I just sit here and um, 
in my bungee chair and just work. And that's all I want to do. Well, and, and I, I, I think like your love of this is, like shows in what you create because what you create <laughs> is just so exuberant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, it is. So, I think it, it reflects your personality. I mean, look at your glasses. Like this is you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Um, when, um, and so for assembly, I just, um, I make beads during the day and, um, and then at night and whatever is when I assemble. And so I make production lists and then I just go from there. So I kind of know where things are going to go, um, eventually. Um, but then I always have extras for oddballs and, you know, when I'm, when I'm at shows that we love, um, you know, when kids come up, I still have kids that are like big adults. What like one is a surgeon in a, in an ER now. And he was like a little bead grow that every time I saw him, he had to get a bead and then he had a box of all his beads and he and his brother. So, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that. That's kind of fun. So if I have a bead that's slightly flawed, like, I'm just too picky. I could never sell it. I put it in a special box and I just wait for kids and then it, it works out and I, and they keep them. <laughs> well, I think, you know, I mean, the beads are, are beautiful. That's almost like a, a little like Island of Misfit toys, but for beads. <laughs> exactly. That Like I can look at something that I made 20 years ago and I'll go, Oh, that's so 1999 because I'll remember why I made that bead. Like I go mm -hmm. into production after I made, I made one. And it'll be like, oh, that woman in Connecticut asked me to make a bead that looked like a nipple, you know. <laughs> I think that's something you would remember. Right. <laughs> Actually, things like that come up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, at Christmas time, I make um, um, naked ladies, just like a little nude torso. And, um, and again, I have a basic mold that I can get the body just like a tube with like a hint of a shape and then I just add to it. And so I'll do a whole series where some are chubby with doopy boobs, some are skinny and very athletic looking. Um, some have a booming butt. I've done them for mastectomies. Um, somebody who bought them for somebody who just had um, a, a surgery and I'll, and, and it, they love it. So at Christmas time I'll make, um, bottle stoppers and I'll have an army of like little naked women and all the chubby ones always sell first and every year every time when that happens I go yes um, I, I'm like that makes me smile just even thinking about it I'm, I'm thinking about my very subpar <laughs> bottle stoppers right now and I was like so not one of friend of naked ladies exactly. <laughs> what am I doing with my life <laughs> I'm putting the naked ladies and things like my mobiles that I make now the outdoor stuff where I mix a little driftwood in glass and then just hang it outside um, and those are kind of fun. So it's been this, this pandemic, I've been trying to, um, you know, just get excited to get me off the phone and not read news and be frightened. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I had fun making yard stuff last month. That's great. Yeah, I, I know um, we have uh, at, at least a, a picture of one of your mobiles on our on our website. So I've seen it. They're quite, they're quite fun. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's really the, you know, with, um, you know, working with the, the glass beads is really like sky's the limit because you can create almost you can do anything. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have kids come up to me at shows and one of them some bit, one time was looking at my earrings and I said, yeah, I can make anything into an earring. They went out, these little rat bastard kids. So they went out and they got like twigs and all this crazy stuff. And then they said, make an earring. And they put it in front of me and I just got wire and I wrapped it and then I kind of threw an um, ear wire on. I'm like, anything and give me a dirty can. I'll turn that, you know, and it became because <laughs> while their mother was shopping that I would turn anything into an earring. It was kind of fun. So, well, I love that. And so yeah. tell us about, tell us about the earrings that you're sporting right now. Which, what, what's, uh, what were you feeling these with those? Are, these are my hoops and these are front facing so that like normally when you see hoops, they're like this, which are very dramatic, but you don't know mm -hmm. how cute you are until you actually have them on. And, um, and so I flip these so that you know you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. So, so you mean instead of, in, instead of the hoops facing to your side? Yeah. Right. Right. So traditional hoops go this way mm -hmm. and mine go that way. Because I, I like that. Yeah. So when you're Ready? doing things like live streams with, you know, the drawing room audience, hello everyone, everyone can see how adorable your earrings are. Exactly. Ready for a selfie. 
<laughs> I'm glad you're selfie ready. So, um, you know, since you've been, you know, being extra creative during, you know, the, the, the quarantine time, what's, what's next on your creativity checklist? Um, I, I just ordered the equipment to start making my own decals. So my plan is that I was going to do, I, I've been, I, been taking pictures of graffiti for you know 40 years and so recently I just love um, resist militant um, graffiti um, mm -hmm. and then when I'm pulling off the internet when I'm reading the story so I've been taking pictures and so what I'm going to do is make little decals of my favorite graffiti um, and then make big beads and then fire them onto the actual beads so there's going to be a protest necklace so that's what I'm probably going to be doing in August. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Well, and obviously, keep us posted and send us pictures. <laughs> um, and then um, lots of housewares. I really like making um, like food things. I like that um, um, you can be sitting around in your pajamas and, and enjoying a nice cheese knife because it, cheese makes it a party. And um, so I, I didn't I didn't have any. Um, pictures prep for our conversation of your houseware stuff. But so everyone knows, uh, we put links in the chat to both uh, Brenda's collection on the drawing room site and also the link to um, the Jasmine Keen website. And you can see all the cool things, like if you put it just a little more towards the center, there you go. This, this is kind of new for me. This is a candlestick. I just found it in my studio this morning. That's awesome. And so, the section. And, um, and so these are kind of nice. So housewares can be comforting. Um, yeah, I want another project that I'm going to be doing for August is um, I have these little um, word plates made, mm -hmm. and so they they've been machined on. And so I gave them my list of words, and I make beads. And so I started this a couple of years ago with my older sister who was blind. And so what she would do is I, I had these stamps made and then I put them in this frame and, um, and then I would stamp a bead. So I'd make a bead, a long bead, and I would stamp it. And then these words have like a raised effect. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then I would flip it around and she would have written down, um, what that that word in braille and then i would braille it on the back and so we it was like a nice little um project for us and we yeah. like planned it on a road trip and she would and she had a few rules for me no swears and i would say deb i'm just gonna it up on the internet and she'd say don't so i still <laughs> haven't because deb said no but um recently i got an account with the library of congress and they make the um the braille um magazines and books and all that and they make mm -hmm. things for um for visually um, impaired and so uh, they came into my booth at a wholesale show and and i went oh wow so i told them what i did with my sister they got very excited so now i just had a word made for them called read and oh. um and so i'm going to be making beads and then turning it into like bookmarks and jewelry and it, that's it wonderful be, inclusive thing because our thing was that to both of us she was blind i was sighted but dots are very meaningful for both of us because she read in braille and she wrote in braille so you would hear like this little weird puncture noise um as she pierced the paper um mm -hmm. and so so this is a, a nice project that um i like to do for her and um the smithsonian um, express some interest in it too. So I just like that my sister's work will be in the Smithsonian with me. That's, a, that's amazing, Brenda. Yeah. So I have words like, um, artsy, silly, create, um, but no swears, no swears, chaos. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm working, I like to listen to podcasts and um, a lot of them are true crime. So as I'm uh, uh, working, I'm listening to the most gruesome forensic information. And so um, because I belong to a few Facebook groups, I had words made for them too. Um, and one of them was DNA because I'm all into the finding the creeps with DNA now. Um, luminol, which is the fluid that they use for blood traces, like when they go through a trunk and they say, oh, there's been a body here. Um, so I did luminol and um, chaos and murder. 
<laughs> so Brenda, so, uh, Anthony did let me know right before the the live stream started that you were also um, that you were listening to uh, you know true crime podcast. So you know I'm also a murderino. So my favorite murder is is one of the podcasts I also well, listen to. Sending, I'm gonna be sending the girls um, Georgia and Karen some murder stuff. <laughs> Excellent. For those who aren't in the know, my apologies. But if you like. Um, True crime podcast. My favorite murder is one of one of my favorites. My, my husband will say, "Is that on again?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love I love Brenda how your work. You know, like you're you're listening to you know podcasts like My Favorite Murder while you're working on things that are you know have interest from you know the Smithsonian and the Library of Congress. So I I love how uh, creativity <laughs> flows everywhere. It's, yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I have a t-shirt that says practically a detective um, because I'm into the DNA stuff now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm well, and one of your, is one of your necklaces a DNA necklace? It's Yes, that was an early influence because I've been doing that for a long time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Before I realized that it would become my day-to-day -day jargon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. And so, you know, you have some, you have some fans who are listening or, uh, to our discussion who are very excited for, for the decals and um, are very excited about the projects that you have coming up. So Good. Good. you have lots of supporters out there. Thank you. That's nice yeah. to hear. We love that. And uh, we have Catherine who, who wishes she could share photos of the Jasmine King pieces that she already owns. So oh. thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for supporting uh, Brenda and talented mm -hmm. artists. We love that. Um, so is there anything you want to make sure that our um, devoted Brenda and Jasmine Keene fans know? Well, everybody, we... anybody that knows me knows that I will try to make anything. Like if somebody, like I have gone to parking lots um, and then rolled up on another car like cop style and I pass um, an, a, a set out because somebody had an event and they, and my husband would say, really beat emergencies. And, you know, and, and I'll be like, I'll bill you, I'll PayPal you. And do an <laughs> movie. Um, so yeah, I just, just keep the orders coming. That's, that's it. That, um, you know, my mother was always uh, horrified by my job and uh, she would say things like, you know, uh, Verizon is hiring. I saw an ad. <laughs> <laughs> so keep the orders coming. That's it. Well, I think I think you found you found the right path, and it might be you know you know the 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 um the audio playing might be scary in the background, but I think what you're creating is just beautiful and lovely and just so fun and um just so you. And I think that's also why it it, it speaks to people because I I think the the joy that you put into your work is present in the pieces even when you know you're not wearing them when a different wearer is wearing them like when Anthony wears her earrings she loves them um my collection is sorely lacking some Jasmine oh, Queen jewelry so I apologize now so my, my ears are bare I apologize uh but yeah we can remedy that <laughs> easily easily, easily. easily. but Brenda I want to thank you so much for joining us today and um giving you know spending time with us we appreciate it um your fans say that they love they love you and your work and have loved your work for over 20 years so thank you your work brings joy this is this is what your fans are saying thank you for getting me through my first uh, awkward um thing. Live stream. <laughs> <laughs> you did a wonderful job no worries at all you did a, a <laughs> you've never had to do that before uh, I've never done this, and um, and it just makes my regional accent very um, noticeable to me. <laughs> Only to you. Fear not. Fear not. If it makes it feel any better when I do these for whatever reason. The Rhode Island accent that I don't really have pops out, okay. like pops out, and I just go, where did that R go? <laughs> oh, yeah. That R is yeah. dicey. <laughs> Ours are very dicey. But on that note, everyone, thank you so much for joining us, Brenda. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, you know, feel feel free to uh, contact 
um, us at the drawing room or Brenda at Jasmine Keen. Um, you know, there are links to uh, the collections in the chat. We thank you for spending part of your Saturday afternoon with us and, you know, wear something beautiful. <laughs> Words to live by. Groovy, groovy. Groovy, groovy. Right. groovy, groovy. Right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.